Okay. Uh, well, there is some sad news for additive number theory. Uh, Mel just told me that uh, Friedman Dyson passed away uh, just uh, yesterday. Okay, sad news. He was 96 on one hand. You see all this man theorem and the, 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 the first theorem, uh, he contributed to that, get a simple proof of, of that. Okay, and so possibly we'll, we'll talk about E-transform, and in some way, what I want to do is to do in part two something in addition in Z over NZ, we were dealing with uh, integers up to now, and it's a preset in integers. Um, <clears throat> so it would be in some way more natural to start by uh, saying something like a Cauchy theorem or something like that. Uh, you know, this important, it has been touched already by, uh, by David, but uh, it's quite important. Uh, by the way, it was on the poster you have for the conference what is given at the, the Cauchy, Cauchy Davenport uh, theorem. So the difficulty compared with the uh, integers, if you are dealing with the uh, Z over NZ, you have two difficulties. One difficulty is that indeed, uh, to, to say something, for example, that Cauchy theorem, Cauchy theorem in Z is something which is absolutely trivial. But uh, what happens is that when you take different elements, they, 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 in the same, they, they may collapse because uh, it's, you are on a circle, you are not a, on a straight line. And uh, so this is one of the difficulty. Another difficulty also is when you have n, z over nz, uh, you may have subgroups where there is no, there is no subgroups, I mean non-trivial subgroups in z over pz. So the situation is a bit easier. So, however, I would like to start by this question of small doubling in Z over PZ uh, because it introduces, according to Freiman, I'm following the, the Freiman approach of it, because this is a good introduction in um, what, uh, what uh, Balu will, will say about um, the sum free sets in Z over PZ. And uh, it's technically a bit more complicated. You may have more subtleties. Uh, but uh, in some way, if you have already some understanding of the general picture, I think it's, uh, we think it is, a, it is a good point. So this is why I start with that. Okay, so what, we, what, we, what I want to, to, to say just uh, first to, to consider the torus, it is R over Z. I think in, in India you say Z. You are more on the British side. Uh, that to say Z, okay? And um, so you can see it in some way definitely as being something, well, in some way you have some equivalence, uh, some one-to-one -one correspondence with the set of the fractional parts with the interval zero, 1, closing zero and open in, in one. But the point is that then you have lost the additive structure, whereas T is additive group. So better you look at this, you see you have zero, one, you have zero, one half, which is here, uh, three quarter and so on. And then you have one again, and you can see T as Z or Z, as S1, if you wish. Or you call it the, the, the way you like. And you have some, I may need also this, the map L, R to T, which is just what you, what you expect, and it is the, uh, natural uh, surjection on T, and uh, which is a group homomorphism for the additive structure. Okay, so something of interest for us will be this exponential of 2 pi i, because this function is a function which is periodic with period one, and so it is well defined on the torus as well. And uh, since it comes very often, you just write it as E of something. E of this, which we write this at E of something. Okay, so when you have to think of that, you think that this nicely behaves if you have the sum, it is an exponential. Exponential of the sum is the sum of exponential and I regard the behavior as something like cosine or sine or something like that. Okay, and the size is modulus is one. Okay, so I would like to start with some lemma and uh, this lemma I write it because then I will use it here. So lemma, 
It is technical, am I not going to, to, to prove it, but just to, to let you understand what, what it is, because in any case, uh, Balu will, will need something more subtle than that. And so there is no point to, to give this, uh, this proof. It will be in a situation which is slightly different, slightly better, maybe slightly more complicated as well. So you have a sequence T1, Tn, a sequence By the way, sequence, you can see that this one as being a multiset, if you wish. I can repeat some, uh, some element. Uh, sequence of n element of t. n being a positive integer of t, of t. And we consider, and we let, uh, f of t, f of t to be the maximum. What, what you do, you see you have elements which are here on the torus. And what I want to consider is something that is, I can take each time half a circle. And what I want to say is what is the maximal number of elements which lie in half a circle. I think if you say it like that, it's clear. But if you want to write it, it is maybe a bit worse. But now you know what I want to do. You'll be happy with that. So it is the maximum, let us say, when u is a real number of uh, the number of indexes j, such that tj belongs to sigma of the interval u, u plus 1 half. Okay, when you are taking, you are taking some u. You are taking an interval of length one half, and you project it here, and you take all the interval of length one half, which are here, and you count the one which counts the maximum number of elements. Okay, so this is the maximum number of elements. Then you have the following. If you take the trigonometric sum, sigma j is equal to one to n of e, of tj, then this sum is at most 2 times f of n, uh, f of t, minus n. So it may seem a bit curious, but at least I want to convince you in two extreme cases, or even to prove it in two extreme cases, and to convince you that it makes sense to have something of this kind. So what happens, for example, if you have something which is really well distributed, if your elements are well distributed, what you, what you will have is that there is a good cancellation between all the elements. And uh, so this sum will be something like zero, let us say. That is something which is very small, okay? But now it is very small, but since it is well distributed, essentially in half a circle, the number of terms you have is something like n over two, okay? And two times n over two minus n is zero. So we are happy with that. Now the point of course is that this is always, the, the worst you can do is something like uh, f of n, f of t n is n, you're gonna do better than that, but this is, this will be, at most n, and whatever happens here, it has more n, you are happy. And another point on, on, in another direction, in the maximal, the maximal circle, you must have at least n over two elements, okay? For obvious reason, and so this term is always positive, or at least not negative, okay? So it makes sense also to have an upper bound by something which is positive, and uh, another extreme case is if all the element Tn really are close one to the other, but if they are all one to the other, of course, what you get is that here, f of Tn in one half of a circle, you can find everybody. So this will be uh, n. So this you have an upper bound, which is n, which is a trivial bound, but it's not completely trivial. I mean, in this inequality, because here, you have all the elements which are going in one direction, all these terms are pointing in the same direction, 
And so you have no cancellation here and you have N. So it is also sharp in this case, okay? So it's not, uh, it's not too bad. So this is what I want to say. I mean, it's a bit technical and uh, thanks to yesterday, I'm not going to tell you anything which is technical. So I skipped this, this part. Okay, so forget about that. This was our first step. Now we, we enter into the, the real matter. Okay, I consider L, let A be A1, blah, 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 AN, be a set. I mean, I need, I'm not going to count elements if I repeat those elements. Okay? There are really distinct elements that we are being doing really when we, when we are considering additive question. Be a set in Z over PZ such that you have small doubling, that is to say cardinality of A plus A is small. Well, what you would expect is something like the 3K minus 3 theorem. And uh, we're far from knowing that. There's more better result than the one I'm going to tell you, which is due to Freiman in the mid 70s. But uh, in any case, this is still open. What can be really the best result you can do in this direction? And uh, so the, the point is to say, okay, I have something which is 2.4 times A minus three. Well, the minus three is just for commodity, but uh, you can win a bit of that, but not too much. And moreover, you need to have something which is, and w w there, there will be some extra uh, condition to say something. So I start with something like that. I have some set for which A plus A is not too large, and I want to see what I can do with this set. The idea is to prove that A is something like in a short arithmetic progression. Okay, this is what I, what I would like to prove. That this A is included in a short arithmetic progression. So I will state the result later on, and I start to see how, what I can do out of that. Okay. So let us work a bit on that. So A plus A, I write it as B, the set B, and the set B is B1, B2, blah, 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 Bn. Again, this is a set. It's not all the element with representation. No, no, I look only at the different elements. Okay, B is a set. Elements are counted only one. Okay, and I want to say something about this. So what is the, the point? And then you, you, you'll understand after a while what, uh, what I am doing. Okay, so I consider the set, possibly I will write it here because I have to make some room, but okay. Consider the set, uh, the, the, no, the, the, so I am co going to consider two trigonometric sum, SA, which is the summation when J goes to one to little n of E of X AG over P, and uh, SB the same thing. SB of X is the same thing is the sum from I. You see, we definitely are interested in considering something like that to be able to say something about the distribution of the elements. This is why the, this uh, harmonic analysis enter the game. And you will understand later what I'm doing with that. The summation from I is equal to one to capital N of E of uh, X, E of uh, X BI divided by P. Okay, so in this formula, there is only one I. The I is not square root of minus one. It is here, but you don't see it, okay? So 
Now, what can we say about the following sum? Summation from p is equal to zero or p minus one to p minus one of, uh, no, some from x, let us say is equal to zero from e to the minus one of s a square of x, s b of x bar, the complex conjugate. That is to say you put a minus one here the complex conjugate, and you have this multiplicative things, and so you just reverse the summation, you expand the SA, and you expand the SB, and you have something which will be the summation over J1 and over J2, and the summation from I over I, I don't put the, the ranges, you see, J1 is always between one and little n, and I is always between one and capital N. And then you have the sum over X, X is equal from x equals zero to p minus one of e of, <clears throat> and then you are, this is multiplicative, so when you take the product of all those, which are what we are doing here, you will get something which will be x times aj1 plus aj2 minus bi divided by p, okay? So this is what you get, and uh, now you want to express this and to say something. Well, each one, you have a pair J1, J2, then there is only one element I such that Bi is equal to AJ1 plus AJ2, because we are taking B as a set, it's not a number of representation. So each time you have that, you have some I for which this is zero. But if this is zero, the sum from zero to p minus one is just equal to p, okay? On the other hand, if here the coefficient is different from zero, then what you get is something which is zero. So to count this number, what you get is something which is simply n, uh, p, n square p, little n square p. Okay, this is the value of this sum, good. Now we want also to get some upper bound for that. So we assume, of course, when x is equal to zero, there is nothing you can win about that. About that. But you may assume now that, assume that for some x, we have the modulus of S A of x, uh, no, 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 just the modulus of SA of X is less than, let us say something at like 3N over 5. Okay, you'll see why it is a good value in some way. Okay, so you assume that you have some cancellation here, and then you see what you can do out of that. So what do you get? We have the following. Okay, n square p, little n square p, which is the sum which we are here. Okay, in this sum, x is equal to zero to p minus one. There is the value zero, you cannot say anything, so you just take it out. If you have zero, then s a is just equal to little n, and uh, s b is equal to capital N. So we have something which will be n, uh, n square capital N, plus the sum when x when um, x is equal to 1 to p minus 1 of s a and you you can take even the modulus so what i'm going to say that this is at most and then i take the modulus of s a x square s b x modulus have this inequality, but uh, okay, I know now that for any x, I, I assume that, ah, no, 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 sorry, I assume that for all x, yeah, I assume that for all x I have this, for all x different from zero. Okay, then I can take out one of this SA and put 3n over 5. Okay, 
So this will be less than n square n plus 3 little n over 5 times summation x to p minus 1 of sa of x, sb of x. Ah, yes, but you know something that if you are squaring, instead of taking this, you, you don't say, you, you don't know really what, what to say about SA, but if you are taking SA square, then you know on average that it cannot be too large, something like possible, okay? So it's better indeed to say that I am taking the, this sum now from zero to P minus one. Okay, I give it back what I had, but the advantage is that now I can say something, this is at most, n squared capital N plus 3n over 5 times summation x is equal to 0 to p minus 1, and I use Cauchy, Schwarz, and I get something which is sa squared summation over x is equal to 0 to p minus 1 of sb x squared power 1 half. Okay, this is just by Cauchy. I get that, okay? And I'm quite happy, if I have room enough for that, uh, want to keep that, okay. I think I've explored everything which is here. Now what do you get? You get the following, that n square p is at most n square capital N, 3 n over 5. So what is this sum? This sum, you see, you, you can expand it. And then whatever, what you are going to find is something which is, either you know it, and if you don't know it, then I explain you how you get this sum, which is easy to get. It will be the same, the same trick as we had with the, with the, the the other thing, you, expol you take that this will be sum over a, sum over a1, sum over a2 of e to the x times a1 minus a2 over p. And again, if a1 is equal to a2, you get a 1, and otherwise you get 0. So you get something which will be just p times the cardinality of a. And this will be p times the cardinality of b. So the p you have square root of p once and square root of p another times. And then you have something which is the cardinality of a, and then you have something which is the cardinality of a plus b. One half, one half. A plus, a plus a, yes, thank you. A plus a. Okay? Aha, but you know something that this is at most 2.4 times a, this one. Okay, and so what you get is that something here is n square capital N plus something which is three over n over five. I think you, you believe me when I tell you what is the square root of 2.4. You will get something, let us say, which is three n over five. You have the p and you have square root of n and square root of little n and square root of capital N. Okay, and uh, capital N is at most well, maybe I write it. Capital N is at most uh, 2N, 2, 4 point N. And uh, what do I need? Well, I would like to have some upper bound of that in terms of P. Because here I have something. Otherwise, I'm just uh, a bit trapped with this. I want to have something in terms of P. So to get something in terms of P, what I need is this will work only if A is not too large. Okay, and this is a real constraint in this, uh, in this question. If you have a set which is not too large, it's fine, but if you have a, a set which is large, it's a different question. There have been improvement also just saying what, here, what can you do if the, if the set is large. But here, what we assume is that N, cardinality of A is not too large is less than, and what will work if you have that, is 1 over 35 times p. So in some way, if you have a small subset, you will be happy. Now if this, 
A is less than that, N will be less than 2 power 4, and you have something which is 0.07 times P. And uh, no, no, yes, so this is less than 1 over 35 times P. And uh, on the other hand, you will have something which is a square root of N. So you have something, or oh, maybe I should write one, one extra, extra line here. So this is P, and this is square root of little n. And this is square root of capital N, okay? And you know that little n, you know what it is compared with P. And you know what is capital N compared with P. And what you get is something which will be 0.3 plus 0.3 P square N. Okay, so this is just the fact here. This fact comes from the fact that you have, from this one, it will come from the fact that you have 2.4. Okay, capital N, you have some square root of 2.4. The square root of 2.4 will give you something like that, times the coefficient 3 over 5. So you have some room for improving that. Uh -huh, you are right, never trust me. It's okay? Good. Thank you. <laughs> it is 0.929 something, but... Uh, yeah, okay. So but it, it is less than the point, point, uh, 0.93. And now since you know that you say that N is not too large neither, you have something which we at most uh, 0.07. If you, even if you want to have this, you can have this if you wish. And this is at most uh, N square P. This is less than n squared p. And so you see that there is a contradiction, okay? So there is a contradiction. This means that this is wrong. You cannot assume that this, is, that this is always true. So now what we have done for the time being, okay, you, you agree with this type of thing, you use Parseval twice, it's not very complicated, and you just take the square root, which sure works well. So you can improve a bit on that, and say something which is a bit lower, but uh, if you want a, a coefficient which is not too bad, better to stay with 2.4, you see, and not to have a, a constant, which is. Okay, so what we have done is that to say that this is not correct, so what we have proved is that there exists x different from zero, said that this is larger. Okay. Good. Okay, so now you know that S A of X, there exists some X such that S A of X is larger, is large enough. So if you know that this is large enough, you have something which is a lower bound for F of T. If you're interested, T being a X A over uh, P. Okay, so there just what you have is that there exists U. Okay, let me write it. There exists U. Maybe, maybe I, uh, I put it as a lemma. Let A be a set in Z over PZ such that you have small doubling property, but with a stronger coefficient than three, coefficient 2.4, and A is not too large, you need also to have this condition, then the lemma you get is that there exists there exists um, X different from zero mod P 
such that the character sum is somewhat large. Summation A belongs to A of E of X A over P. This sum, um, no, 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 okay. Uh, I want, I want to, to go, to, go to, to what is of interest for me. Okay, blah, 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 there exists x. There exists x different from zero and u real. Such that if you look at the element x a over p on the torus, there exists half a circle on which you have enough elements. So it's such that the cardinality of the set of A in, in A, such that x A over P, x A over P, belongs to sigma of U, U plus one half. It's in some an interval of length one half in, uh, on the torus. This cardinality is larger than something. So what can be the, the larger? Here you say that you have something which is 3n over 5. And so you have 3n over 5 plus n. This is 8n over 5. And if you divide by 2, you have something which is 4n over 5. OK? Good. So this is, the, this is the lemma. We have used two things. This technical lemma which tells you if the sum is, if there is one sum which is not too small, then your set is really unbalanced. There is half a circle in which you have a lot of elements. Good. So this lemma we don't need any longer. This is what we have right now. So now we have to build on that. What is the interest of having something which is in half a circle. The point is that if you are in half a circle, it's in some way the addition in half a circle is isomorphic to the addition in n, in z. You see, you have no now difficulty for that. So the point is to know, can we say something about the addition on this point? So, okay, so we have proved that. And so what we say that, now let us consider, so this is the, the statement of this lemma. Okay, let C be such a subset, a subset of A. Okay. So what we have is the following. Okay, we can lift. Indeed, this set, uh, it's not of A. Yeah, is it the element A? Yeah, fine. So uh, this is element of A. Okay, so it means that Xc over P belongs to that when C is in P. So we can lift those elements. Uh, what I would like to describe as being XC. So XC, which is, this makes some sense because you have elements which are in A and uh, maybe XA, XC over P. I mean, what I mean here is that this is the set of XC over P when C belongs to C. Okay? And I want just to, to lift them in Z. Okay. We can lift them. Uh, I think this I don't need neither. We can lift the in a set of integer into a set of integer. Of integers. Lying 
and the interest is that we can leave them in the same interval, okay? In uh, lying in uh, the interval, in some interval, lying in some interval of Z, which is U, U plus P over two. So some interval of R, if you wish. Okay, so you have, oh, yes? C is a subset of A. A. There, there, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence, but uh, it depends what you want to say. Either, either you take all these elements, or you say C is a subset of A, as you wish. If you say A, C is a subset of A, then you have to consider this set. Ah, yes, so this is this set XC over P that we are lifting, okay? Ah, yeah, I see what you want, because I want to, to say something that it is like A. What can I do here? Possibly I can do that too. Um, is it a is it a problem? No, it is the uh huh. Yes, you want to take C directly because those are the elements which are here, and you want to. To, to take them up, you, you are right, you are right. Uh, so okay, be such a subset of A, we can lift Yeah, it is. Yeah, we can lift, uh, no, no, it's fine. If I take element of A, I lift the element X A over P, yeah, yeah, we can if X A over P. Yeah, this is C. This is C. I mean, let C be such a subset of A, okay? So in any case, what you have to think is that as we got addition, multiplying by X different from zero is not a problem, okay? So this is, uh, this is what I have. And so what I want to lift is this. And I want to lift it for element in C. Because this is important because now adding elements from this or adding element in, in A will be the same thing. Okay, you have a one-to-one -one correspondence now. So in the same, in some interval of R of this side. Okay? So at least the word such, this is not problem. Yeah, okay, okay. So be such a subset, okay, satisfying that. I, I could have said, okay, now there exists a, such a subset, there exists X such that that, and I take C to be this subset of A. It's fine? Okay, no, you're right to, 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 to say what, uh, what uh, if something is wrong, but I think, I think it's clear, it's fine to say that. Okay, so now I have this, this, and now since I am in some, something which is a subset, then I can use Addition here. So I have the following. So we have the following that C, pl C plus C, first of all, C is the same as A. Cardinality of C is the same as, no, no. Cardinality of C is something, I don't know what. But I know that C plus C, ah, I want to say something about C plus C. Okay. Uh, because if I take two elements from here, when I add them, they're in the interval 2u, 2u plus p, okay? And so when I go down with them, I have different elements, okay? So we have the following that c plus c, what can I say about c plus c? C plus C is at most 
well, is at most a plus a. Okay? But now there is one point that I know something about a plus a. a plus a is at most 2.4 a minus 3. Okay? But I know that c is rather large because I take such an element, the cardinality of c is larger than 4n over 5. Okay? So what I have is that, let us write it, cardinality of c is larger than 4a over 5 times a. This means that a is at most 5 over 4 times cardinality of c. Okay? And so this is at most 2.4 times 5 over 4 times cardinality of C minus 3. Ah, uh, is it fine to have something like that? Or should it be 4 maybe? Uh, okay, let us, let us put it like that. We'll be happy with it. And what is 2.4 multiplied by 5 divided by 4? You have something which is here 0 0.6, and 0 0.6 by 5 is 3. And this is a 3c minus 3. And you have here a strong inequality. Okay? So you're happy with that. Now you can say something that c is included in a short arithmetic progression. Okay? C is included, or the image of C uh, the image of Well, okay, of C is included in a short arithmetic progression. Okay, it's not yet the end, but you are close to the end. If you go back to the element xc over p, so on the torus, xc over p are included in a short arithmetic progression, okay? But multiplying by something which is different from zero, it is the same thing that uh, looking di directly to the image of C over P, they are also lying in, an, in a short arithmetic progression. So the elements X C over P and so C over P are lying in a short arithmetic progression. Okay? So you have done already some job. So essentially what you have done for the time being is to say, okay, we can prove by in some way using some harmonic analysis or trigonometric sums, we can prove that there is a large part of A, which has a nice property in which I can consider it using additive property in Z. I can consider that those are elements, those are integers in some way. Everything is integers. So now since they are integers, I am able to use the tools I have from integers and to say this is in a short arithmetic progression. Fine. This is what is called partial rectification. You, we take a part of A and we consider it as not being in a circle uh, any longer, but being on a, on a line. Okay? This is partial rectification. So let us say we have performed
And as you will see, this can be used also in other problems. Balu will tell you about that next week. Okay, so we have performed partial rectification. We are not at the end. Yes? Short means that you don't have much more than the number of terms. You, 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 tell some, you told something about, about this. So this what? No more than two C minus one. Yeah. Okay. So what, what tells you? What it tells you is that the, the following: that what you have is that the number of terms, the number of terms, the short, well, short means uh, at most the length. of the interval is at most uh, C uh, plus, uh, how is it? C plus C minus, if I want to write it that way, uh, C plus C, C plus C, no. This is the number of terms, and the term is something like plus c or something like that. So it is the number of terms of c. Uh, let me let me let me think. Uh, you have something which will be k here. This is the so you have k terms. So this will be the length you have, and what you add is something which is uh, the sum minus the number of terms mm. wait a minute so it is well it it is at most uh, it is at most if if you want not, not to be too delicate you say it is at most three times the the number of terms this will work. Hmm? Hmm? Yes, yes, it is something, it is. Yeah, it is, it is even two. Yeah. Is that most? Uh, okay, short means uh, the length of the interval is at most uh, even two is fine. The number of them. Yeah, because this is for, for C itself and not for C plus C. So for C itself, it is in something when you have at most uh, yeah, two C terms. You can do better if you consider the distance you have. This is, let us say, in the worst case. Well, it is well distributed. But otherwise, it will depend on the C plus C minus C. Minus 2c. OK, so you have something of the kind. So this, the, 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 these elements are lying in, a, in something which is rather concentrated. So since you know also that 2c is not too large, because c is, a, is less is comparable to a, so you have this is really short in terms of p. So on the circle, you have something which is very close to a small interval. So this part of C is a very small interval. So if you look at the picture, the picture is the following. You have somewhere a rather concentrated part in which you have all your C are here, up to dilation. Because I say the arithmetic progression, but then if I multiply by the, by the constant, I can say that I am in a short interval. So this is what you have. You have this, which up to dilation. So up to dilation. Somewhere the dilation will kill the arithmetic progression. The point is that if you are on the line, of course, if you have something which is arithmetic progression, it's not exactly the same thing as an interval. You cannot just divide everything like that. But uh, if you are on a, on a torus uh, dilation, non-trivial dilation in Z over PZ, 
uh, just uh, leads you to, to an interval, if you wish. So, okay, so this is up to dilation. This is the picture you have. And C plus C is rather short. Okay, it's at most three times. Um, three times, the, the, the number of elements is, uh, is at most uh, three times of C, and so you're in, a, in this short arithmetic progression. So now what happens? You still have something which is somewhere here. You still have something which is A minus C. And you have to deal with that. What can you say about that? But you see, if you have one element which is not close to C, if some A is not close to C, What happens? Then you have the following. This was our crucial point <coughs> we start with. If there is some A which is not too close to that, what you'll have is the following. If, say if there exists A, in A minus C, which is not close to, to C, then what happens? Then when you're looking at A plus C, if it is close, okay, fine, you are happy, because then you can improve on your arithmetic progression. But if it is far from this, then what you have is that if it is here, what happens? You have A. Well, when you are looking at A plus A, A plus A is larger than, well, when you make the sum, you have the sum of those two elements, of two elements of C, okay? This will tell you that this is C plus C. But then, this, uh, around this element, when you add a, a plus this one, it will tell you a complete different set C that you will get, okay? So then you will get something which is plus C plus A. But this, what is the number of elements here? Well, this is of course the same thing as C plus C plus C. But then you just use the Cauchy business. And you know that C plus C cannot be too small. This is larger than 2C minus 1. Okay, even if it is completely concentrated in one arithmetic progression, this will be 2C minus 1. And then you have something which is plus C. And so this is larger than uh, 3C minus 1, okay? But then you know that in terms of A, it will tell you that this is A plus A, so you know that C is larger than 4 cardinality of A over 5, so this will be larger than 4 cardinality over 5, that is to say that multiply by 3, and then you have A minus 1, okay? But what is this? This is uh, 12 div divided by 5, and 12 divided by 5, this is exactly 2.4 times A minus 1, okay? And then you get a contradiction. So now you have to be a bit more delicate if you want to know exactly what it is in terms of the length. And uh, I just state the, the theorem, and since I have 46 seconds, I maybe stop around here. So now let me write a theorem. Let A be a set in Z over PZ such that we have this and this. So there exists X, we don't care about that. So what we can say is the following. Uh, 
I'm back to the, to the statement. And here the statement is a bit more delicate than what I proved. Is the following. There exists an arithmetic progression. An arithmetic progression with at most a plus a minus a plus 1 terms which contains a. Okay, so this is in some way the same result. Yeah, but it's fine. This is the same, the same result you have for uh, the 3k minus 3. So the loss we had is that we, we could use the 3k minus 3 theorem only to a subpart of A. Okay? And uh, you can see that you get something as soon as you can say that in half a circle you have more than one half of the element. If you say that you have more than one half of the element, it will be enough to give something like that. So maybe I can tell you if I have, you say something at four minutes or something of the kind. No, not more. I would like to, to say just to add one word, and I'm not going to prove anything on that. Uh, what about z over nz? So maybe uh, just uh, the, the second paragraph, a word on small doubling in Z over NZ. Well, okay, we are not much interested in N is prime, but F is anything. So what we can prove, and we started to, to work on that with, uh, with Freiman, and it has been improved by uh, Balu and by uh, his student uh, uh, Prem Prakash Pandey. Uh, so the constant have slightly evaluated, but uh, essentially it's not that great, but it says something. Assume, so we will let A be in Z over NZ, and we assume that A plus A is less than 2.1. Now it is 2.1. When we started, it was 2.04. Uh, you see it's even worse than that, times A. Then we have the following. There exists and uh, A is, no, 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 it's fine. Then there exists a proper subset of H of uh, Z over NZ, H said to that, <clears throat> well, what happens? That either A is in an arithmetic progression of cosets Of course, that's modulo. Sorry? Some? Proper subgroup? Yes. Uh, proper subgroups in Z over NZ, you may have proper subgroups. Oh, proper subgroup, yes. Thank you. Proper subgroup, yeah. The proper subgroup says so that either H is in arithmetic progression of cosets modulo, uh, modulo uh, H with at most uh, L terms and which are well filled. By this I mean that uh, a, the, the size you may have is L minus 1 times H. This is uh, sm 
smaller. This uh, yes, this is smaller than a plus a minus a. And since a plus a is not too large, this is really a, a small times a. So you have really proper subsets, some of which are well filled. That is to say that in each of them, or in most of them, you have a lot of elements. On average, it is well filled. So there is something with L is equal to one, this tells you nothing. But if L is equal to one, then you have, or L equal, it is, is equal to one, and then H is rather large. And then A is larger than uh, something, well, 10 to minus nine or 10 to minus five, this is what, uh, what uh, Prem Prakash got times uh, H. It's not much, but it has a positive density. So if you have a positive density in some way, you cannot say anything. But if you have a small density, then you can say what is the structure. In some way, having a positive density is already giving something about the structure. So this is what, uh, what you get. And the key point for that, I just wave hands and I don't say more, is to say something about additive, small, small doubling in subsets which are of the kind Z cross a finite abelian group. If you have a short subset in this set, then you have something which is, it is in small number of layers which are well filled. Okay, so when you are breaking this z over nz, and of course this you can do only if n is sufficiently large and uh, n is, uh, is not a prime, but if n is a prime, we have something which is much better. Soon as it is not a prime and large enough, you can do something like that. Okay, so I think I stop here, and I'll see with, uh, with Balu what, uh, what we do on Monday, maybe, maybe I'll just go on, on uh, uh, more or less in the memory of Friedman Dyson, to, to say something about uh, addition in, uh, in Z over in Z over NZ. Okay, so good, thank you very much.